Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today, I am hitting the nostalgia button hard. I want you to think about when you were a kid. What was that one cartoon you would rush home to watch? Maybe you had to wait till Saturday mornings. Maybe it wasn't too long ago for you and you can stream it on your favorite streaming app. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, we had to wait. My older brother and me absolutely loved watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was on our bed sheets, it was on our wall decorations, it was the video games we played, it was the action figures we threw around in the dirt outside. We were turtle obsessed. And a few years ago for Christmas, my older brother bought me a cell from the 1980s animated series. And I was like in awe of this gift. I put it on a shelf in my man cave, got busy with other things, and it just kind of got lost. As I was doing some cleaning the other day, I found it and thought this thing needs a proper display. So I am going to build a retro 80s television set kind of like a picture frame or a shadow box to house this memorabilia in to give it its proper place on my shelf. So we're, we're gonna build a fake foam TV. Let's get to building. There are tons of companies out there that have massive archives of these old cartoon cells. In old animations, a lot of times a background would remain stagnant and the characters would be animated frame by frame on these transparent sheets. They would add the animation layers on top of the background, take a picture, then set the next one on, take a picture, and so on and so on. So the background for this is just a print representation of the scene, and then the actual cell used in the filming of Donatello here is laid on top. It has a letter of authenticity on the back and I'll be designing the shape and size of my TV based off of this matted memorabilia. I am by no means an expert in preservation, so if me taking this out of its already broken sealed plastic bag bothers you, sorry, look away. This is not the bill for you to watch. If you do know of some tips or things that I could use to protect it with more, please let me know in the comments. I'm not sure of its monetary value, but the sentimental attachment I have being from my brother and commemorating our favorite show, not interested in me selling it probably ever. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I can vaguely remember some of these large old dinosaur TVs we used to have. The sounds and the smells they made when you switched them on, it just kind of adds to that nostalgia of this build for me. I looked up a few old TVs in a Google search and combined aspects that I liked from them as well as ones that seemed familiar to me. This won't be my final layout, but it'll help me to put down some ideas and get started in the right direction. I measure the artwork, then get estimate how big I want the overall TV to be and component spacing and stuff. Like I said, this was a quick sketch, so a few things will get tweaked as I go about the build, like me remembering here in a minute that the TV antenna, or rabbit ears as I remember them being called, didn't have RCA hookups on them. They were typically connecting to the back of the television with a coaxial cable. I figured that out as I was looking at more images. I start by making my frame for the sides, so I really just need my length, width, and depth. I can put some written instructions together if you need, but it's relatively simple and you're going to base it off of whatever the artwork is you are building this container around. With my measurements, I cut out some 6mm high density foam and a slightly longer 10mm foam to cover over the top. Something else I want to point out, yes, this could be made with other materials and probably even simplified by buying some pre-made frame or shadow box. I love the process of using non-conventional 
conventional materials. No need to yuck my yum because you think there's an easier way to do it. Make stuff how you want and have fun thinking outside of the box or in this case, making a box. Let me give you some rationale here. Maybe this will help you. I'm using foam so I can make it lighter. I have literally closets full of this material in my build room, and I want the ability to make it exactly how I want without having to use any power tools outside in the 100 plus degree weather in Texas we are currently having for the past month and a half. Another idea if you didn't want to go this route is to go down to a thrift store and find an old TV to gut out. I looked at retro 80s television selling online and I'm not about to pay the price they want for some of these dinosaur devices. I have some six millimeter high density foam that will act as the inner support and a thicker 10 millimeter lower density foam that I'm going to carve into later on the outside. Overlapping the two pieces of foam on the corners will make it more sturdy and give me more glue surface to prevent it from separating. Slather contact cement on the sides you want to stick together. Let them sit for a few minutes and then tack them into place. I am trying to figure out what the outside frame will look like. It's kind of out of order with how I'm going to actually attach it, but I wanted to figure out the outside first because that's the predominant part you'll see. So that's why it's stuck here. I don't know how many of you had siblings, but I can remember that Saturday morning cartoons and after school shows were sacred amongst brothers. Whatever beef we had was put aside for a few hours while we enjoyed our TV shows. TV programming schedule still exists, but with streaming services, the internet, and YouTube. Hold on, let me um, do this in an old man voice to really emphasize that I'm old. I feel like today's kids will miss out on that unifying anticipation of programs not being on demand. Yeah, good old days. These old TVs usually had some cool beveled metal frame around the screen. Here I am cutting out a base layer that the frame will sit on top of. This ends up being the recess that I'll glue my forementioned fake metal frame on top of. Really, I am just figuring out the spacing I want and how much of my mat will show in the final result. I also went ahead and added a spacer to one side for some support in the frame. In case you didn't know because you weren't born in the age of giant furniture televisions, TV designs back in the day were not typically symmetrical. Knobs, buttons, and speakers were often off to one side of the screen.
Now I'm going to make the beveled frame that goes around the screen. I'm assuming this was to make it look more like a picture frame, or maybe it served as some other important purpose. I just vaguely remember most of what I saw were wood enclosures with silver frames. I'm going to cut against my ruler at an angle to cut out some triangles in this 10 millimeter foam. Then I flip it over and cut the next one on the edge straight down to make the second piece and then repeat. I'll, I'll need four of these. Then I cut some strips of six millimeter foam just a little taller and glue it to the vertical side of my right triangle to make a piece of decorative trim. After that it's just a matter of gluing it down to the recess. Skipping forward just a little bit, you'll see that my frame is finished. I also cut a recess to the side of the screen and made a grate to simulate the speaker cover on the bottom portion there. Here I am trying to make some dials out of foam. My camera died in the middle of this, so I'll try and explain the best I can. I trace a circle onto foam and then cut an outward angle from it. Then proceed to trace and cut and glue other various shapes of foam on top of it to make it look like an old school dial. Once once done, I super glue a piece of wire to the back to act as a pivot point for the dial to turn on. Search UHF and VHF dials and you'll get some good examples of what I'm trying to go for here. VHF or very high frequency were channels 2 through 13 and then the UHF or ultra high frequencies were channels 14 through 69 or 83 if you had a really old TV. Now time for some wood grain. You could definitely do this a number of different ways, including leaving this smooth and just painting on the effect later to make it more like a finished, polished version. I'm going to carve my wood grain in because to me it's easier to paint the detail with dry brushing and washes than it is to try and mimic it by hand. Doing it this way will also help me hide my seams and any imperfections that I may have. I put a stone bit on my rotary tool and just go over the surface in sporadic wavy patterns. You can also use a hobby knife to score the surface or a wood burner to burn the lines in. To get a nice raised wood grain, maybe a combination of these or all of these can really sell the effect. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while sanding or burning foam. You don't want to breathe this stuff in. For the TV antenna on the top, I'm going to carve it out of some 24mm and 48mm EVA scraps that I have. I just look at a reference image, carve the bulk out with my box cutter, then sand it down with a belt sander or a rotary tool to get it close to shape, and then make another pass with my stone bit to smooth the surface out before I hit it with a heat gun. You could find objects that are close to these shapes and glue them together, or you could get the real thing. I'm I'm sure they're probably still sold and relatively cheap. I wanted most of my build to be the same material, which is why I am being extra and making my own. It's a challenge.
sorry about the tight recording. It was early and I was trying to get this pizza made and all the plasti dipping before I left for work so that it wasn't 106 when I was trying to do it later. I cut out a triangle into some 10 millimeter foam, cut a 36 millimeter dowel in half or relatively close and glued it to the triangle to make my crust. To make the cheese look like it was dripping off the edges, I added a layer of two millimeter foam on top of the triangle and added some round two millimeter circles for my pepperoni. I made a baby ninja turtle a while back that was holding a piece of pizza made in much the same way. Once fully constructed, I heat up the foam and put a bend in it where it will hang over the corner of the TV on the front. Coats of Plasti Dip. The paint job is pretty basic. I dry brush on various shades of brown, starting with the darkest and working my way to lighter and lighter browns as it dries. Then I used silver rub and buff on the frame and gave the whole base a watered down black and brown acrylic washer to to dirty up the grooves. All the other little bits got their fair share of paint and were then ready for final assembly. Oh, and I covered the wood parts with a glossy Mod Podge to give it a little sheen. Assembly time. I glue in some fencing wire into my TV antenna and then glue on the foil onto the tips. The foil was supposed to improve reception, I think. Whether or not that was actually helpful or not, I don't know. All I remember is that ours had it as a kid, so I thought it was fitting. Then I glued on my assembled rabbit ears, pizza, and dials with some super glue. I left the UHF and the VHF dial supported by just the wire so that I could turn the knobs and be a nerd for a little bit if I wanted to. I cut a piece of acrylic the dimensions of my box and hot glued it to the inside. I didn't want to use super glue because super glue on acrylic clouds it and I didn't want that. As for the last touch, I positioned my mat on my cell in the spot I wanted and temporarily taped it down. I don't intend to change it, but I may need to make some adjustments or see some issue later and need to pick it back up, so I made it temporary with some scotch tape.
Hopefully you enjoyed this build and can see an interesting way to display your memorabilia. This really does bring back some fond memories of simpler times with my older brother. Things seem so meaningless and mundane at the time, but are now cherished memories. So thanks Clayton for such an amazing gift. Something so simple that can instantly make me feel like a kid again, enjoying time with my big brother. Nothing quite like rocking a mullet, eating some pizza, and watching a team of mutant turtles named after famous artists fighting crime. Love you, bro. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I love how this turned out. I'm super glad that I made it thick so that if I wanted to, I could lay it on a table. And still at the same time, it's light enough because of the material I use that I could hang it on a wall. Um, it definitely brings back some memories. I don't know that we had this style of television, but I can definitely remember some of those old turn knobby channels with the rabbit ears on them growing up as a kid and this is just going to make me smile every time i see it think of my brother and the times that we had as kids and and oh maybe you'll try and make something like this yourself and immortalize some piece of memorabilia that you own to make it even more epic and stand out yeah maybe you'll get some yeah and inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. Now I must find a place to hang Donatello. Peace out. If you enjoyed what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.